For centuries, ships ruled the seas, but a hidden enemy lurked within the ship's timber structure. Shipworms, tiny mollusks, burrowed into wooden hulls, reducing even the sturdiest vessels to splinters. How did a humble worm inspire one of the UK's great engineering marvels? The first navigable tunnel built under London's River Thames over 200 years ago. Isambard Kingdom Brunel is arguably one of the UK's greatest engineers, known for his ships, tunnels, bridges, and railway lines. But before he struck out on his own, he worked with his father Mark Brunel, also an engineer and inventor. At the tender age of 20, Isambard Kingdom Brunel cut his teeth on his father's Thames Tunnel project, a 400-metre tunnel under the busy River Thames connecting Rotherhithe on the south bank to Wapping on the north. An ambitious undertaking that not only marked the first time a tunnel would be built under a navigable river, but pioneered a method of tunnelling still used to this day. Inspiration for how to dig the tunnel came from a comparatively tiny creature, the Teredo navalis, a wood burrowing worm. Mark Brunel, who often did engineering work in dockyards, saw the worm's work firsthand. With a hard shell protecting its head, the worm could eat through ship timbers, all while reinforcing its tunnel as it moved along. Could he supersize the worm's method? Could he invent a structure that would support the soft earth while tunneling to prevent collapse? In 1818, Mark Brunel patented his tunneling shield design. At a whopping 12 meters wide by 7 meters high, the final version of this iron structure consisted of three levels and 12 cells across. With 36 miners all digging simultaneously, dug earth would be carried back along the tunnel and up a shaft. In 1825, work on the tunnel finally began. The first step was to build a caisson shaft, a watertight cylindrical structure that would be sunk into the ground at Rotherhithe. Measuring 15 meters by 15 meters, which at the time was the largest caisson ever built, this shaft would provide access for tunneling operations. Progress on the tunnel's construction is depicted through a series of 30 drawings. Now part of the Brunel Museum's collection. Drawn by Mark Brunel himself, as well as his son, draftsmen and engineers, they paint a picture of what was happening 23 metres beneath the Thames. During its construction, curious members of the public would visit each day to catch a glimpse of the tunnel works. The site also played host to underground banquets, carnivals and performances. On the 12th of January 1828, young Isambard Kingdom Brunel, who was a hands-on engineer working inside the tunnel, almost lost his life when the tunnel flooded for the second time. While badly injured, he managed to get to safety, but six of his fellow workmen were not so lucky and drowned in the event. While Mark Brunel promised a three-year project, the tunnelers only emerged 18 years later in Wapping, having endured six floods, at least six deaths and near bankruptcy. When the Thames Tunnel officially opened in 1843, the tunnel shaft now converted into a grand entrance hall attracted a million visitors in the first three months. That's half the population of London at the time. While originally designed for foot passengers and horse-drawn carriages, lack of funds meant that the long ramps required for this were never built. Instead, it was converted into a train tunnel in 1869 and is still in use by the London Overground. 
Today, the Brunel Museum is located at the site of the tunnel shaft. Visitors can venture down into its depths, where 200 years ago work began on a huge engineering feat whose inspiration came from a humble worm.